as we look at differential equations, okay? I'm trying to think if they're the same name, Hannah. I know what you're thinking of. But we're more going to be integrating within these equations. The equations you're thinking of, we're taking derivatives. They just numbers. So, I know, and I can't come up with the name, but, yeah. Okay. So, introduction to differential equations. When we solved equations containing numbers and variables, our solutions were numbers. Now we're going to explore differential equations where our solution will be a function. A differential equation is any equation that involves one or more derivatives of a function. These equations describe relationships that involve rates of change. Okay. So, consider the following statement. The population P of your state is growing at an instantaneous rate of 3% of the population per year. So, and this is, I guess this does relate when we talk about differential equations. It's relating to what we solved back in first semester when we only did derivatives. But the population P of your state is growing at an instantaneous rate. Instantaneous rate of change. That's our IROC. That's our derivative, yes? And so there you'll see dP dt. So the change in population in respect to the change in time. And it's 3% of the population per year. So you see 3% is a decimal times P, which is population. That's an example of a differential equation. Okay, We're going to be working on solving these eventually. Okay, So let's write a few. Write a differential equation that describes each relationship stated below. So Alex and Tina have a new Maine Coon kitten named King Robert. Robert is gaining weight, <laughs> W, at a rate that is inversely proportional to his age, T, in months. Remember, I don't write these problems, okay? So, okay. Alex and Tina have a new Maine Coon kitten named King Robert. Why did I even reread that part? <laughs> Irrelevant. What do we know? Robert is gaining weight, gaining weight W at a rate that is inversely proportional to his age T in months. So what? Well, they told us weight is W. Yeah, we're just using W. And we're not writing. We're just writing a um, equation. We're not. We don't. We're not solving right now. Oh, okay. DW over DT. Okay. What about DW over DT? Are you with her? Yeah. Because it's a change in weight over time. Yes. So we are going to talk DW <laughs> over DT. Now, at a rate that is inversely proportional to his age t. You guys remember how to do inverse proportional? Isn't that like one over the other? One over the other? Yeah, because if we think inverse variation is the word I was looking for. <laughs> okay, so we had direct variation and inverse variation, right? Do you remember those? If there, if it was, so just a little side note for my benefit, if it was direct variation, that was y equals k times x, right? If we did inverse, it was y equals k divided by x is what it was, where we're saying that y is inversely proportional to x, and k is some constant. Okay, so that's your review of algebra there for the day. Well, there may be more, but, you know, um, inverse proportional. So, if he is gaining weight at a rate that is inversely proportional to his age, that's saying weight is inversely proportional to his age. So, W equals K over T. Well, except it's not just W, it's oh. DWDT because he's gaining weight. 
he's gaining weight, which is proportional to his age. So we're going to say for this half, T. W over T. T, 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 T over W. K. <laughs> over T. <laughs> K over T here. Is K just from the like the inversely? K exactly. K is your constant of variation. Okay. So it's the idea here that you know my brain is saying weight is inversely proportional to age, except it's not just weight, it's the fact that he it's the rate. And so the rate of gaining weight is that DW DT. Okay. Kind of succeeded in explanation there. <laughs> As we're all guessing letters and getting stuck for a moment. <laughs> okay. Next, your cup of Starbites peppermint coffee <laughs> is cooling at a rate that is proportional to the difference between the room temperature, T sub R, and the current temperature, T, of the coffee. Okay, so your cup of Starbucks peppermint coffee is cooling. So it'd be okay. There's something going to be in regards to the cooling, yes. Okay, so we're going to have to, yes, think in terms of something in regards to cooling. At a rate that is proportional to the difference between room temperature and current temperature. Okay. Thoughts on where to go here? I'm thinking there's going to be a Oh, no, that's fine. Well, there's a rate. And so it, it'll be like a T minus T sub R, or a T sub T R minus, minus T. T. Okay. There is the difference between the room temperature T sub R and T. current temperature T. So there is going to be in within the problem a T sub R minus T. As we work to get the pieces here, right? Proportional. Now, proportional, it's not inversely proportional, it is just proportional. What's the idea of proportional? Yeah. That is your direct variation. Okay, so when we're talking proportional, that is the idea of y equals kx, if you want to throw that in your notes somewhere. So if it's proportional to the difference between the temp room temperature and current temperature, then Doug said throw a K out front. <laughs> we're, just, we're getting the pieces here. Okay, what else? There needs to be a negative. It's cooling, yes? So we are going to throw on a negative K. Okay, and that is because um, it's cooling. The coffee temperature is decreasing. So that's why that K is less than zero since the coffee temperature is decreasing. Okay. Mm. Is it like D over D? We don't want just D on top. D, D X. D T R. Oh. Oh. That's not what I was thinking about. Okay. That's actually what I was thinking. I was like, there's they can't have two T's, little... and I forgot like the lowercase and uppercase. Yeah. Lowercase and uppercase can mean two different things. Okay. Oh, so about time. <laughs> capital T is the fact that this is in relation to temperature, right? That's what we're talking about. So it's a change in temperature, capital T, 
in regards to the change in time. Okay? I can't say always, but remember, often that denominator is dt is in change in time. Okay? Okay. Okay. As we continue here, um, the bottom piece. We're going to talk about general solution to start with. Um, the general solution of a first-order differential equation represents a family of curves. We've kind of talked about that before. We've looked at some graphs there. Um, so first we're going to look at some of the notation methods for representing differential equations. Okay, Differential equations have derivatives in them. When we did differential equations previously, we've had the dy dx or dy dt or what, you know, in this one dt dt, dw dt. We're used to seeing that notation, but you could also, for instance, we can bring back the prime notation. So this would be a differential equation. 3y prime plus y double prime equals 4y. Okay, that is just general differential equation notation. Probably, I would say, the easiest to write in. Okay. We've got the middle one, which instead of using single primes or just using y primes, you're using f of x. Okay, that officially falls, you know, there's your function notation. And then the other option is, instead of using the nice neat primes, we can use the dy dx, d squared y dx squared. Um, we can use that, and that is your Leibniz notation. Le I can never get his name right. Leibniz? Le Why do Leibniz? I don't know. Weird names? Because um, they're not American. I wish you wouldn't do that. <laughs> I mean, that's bad to say, but they're not American. I hate it. So. Like the long Anyways, me too. But, oh, let me tell why is it d squared? Why and not d mm -hmm. y squared? To make it difficult on us? I mean, I, I don't have a good answer okay. for that. Because I always have to stop and think about it, too. Okay. <sighs> That's what I hate. It's the D squared. Yeah. Y. I don't have a good answer as to why that is what it is. Hi. Hi. I have a delivery for Mario Pandas. I'm, I'm going to put it on this desk and then you can look at it. I'm not sure I want to because we're trying to have a class here. You bring this for him and not for the rest of us? <laughs> what is that? Yeah. It looks like a funnel cake. Just the, the much smaller version than. Oh, I see. I was told wow. to deliver that because thanks for Trent baby. And Trent was too scared to come inside. Good, <laughs> you know, Gatlin's not gonna be scared. No. You can ask them about that. Bye, Gatlin. Bye, Gatlin. I don't think it's hard for Mario. It's not. Here's the other thing, Kirsten. Calc is fourth hour and it gets all kinds of crazy interruptions. Mario's thinking. Interesting. You're gonna get you're gonna get variety today. Emma used to get drinks. <sighs> oh, hey, that would have been Gatlin, too. Yeah. You know, <laughs> there is a connection here. <laughs> Since we don't have Gatlin's girlfriend, we're going to use Gatlin's boyfriend. Is that what it is here? Yes. <laughs> yep. <laughs> They're not together. Okay, sorry. Well, you probably knew that. Well, I did know that, but See? I've been confused this week on parking lot duty, so I yeah. didn't know. <laughs> yeah. I hadn't forgot. I hadn't thought to ask we're my kids at home. Yes. Okay. My mom asked. They're so basically dating, but not dating. Not a break. They're just friends, okay. guys. How Not a break. Work? Well, they're just friends. Don't my parking lot duty has confused what <laughs> Logan and Natalie have told me. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's it's interesting. Honestly, I think you're one of those. You know, I've learned they're just friends. Haven't you guys okay. before? And this is all going on recording, folks. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. It's fine. It's only us six. Next yeah. question. Okay. Moving on. Okay. Let's move on. I agree. <laughs> um, I guess I didn't. So we talked about a family of curves. A general solution. We're also then when you sub in numbers and find the sp particular solution. Okay, that is going to be the other part that we look at. Okay, let's look at an example. That's what we really need to do, right? <laughs> We're being asked to show that both y equals two e to the x and y equals e to the negative 4x are valid solutions for the differential equation y double prime plus 3y single prime equals 4y. 
So basically we've got two different problems here that we're looking at. So let's worry about right now y equals 2e to the x. And if y equals 2e to the x is a valid solution for that differential equation, keep in mind we have y here, yes. We're also going to need to know y prime and y double prime. So, okay, if y is 2e to the x, what is y prime? 2e to the x. 2e to the x. Okay. What is y double prime? 2e to the x. That was exciting. Okay. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take this equation of y double prime plus 3y prime equals 4y. So what is y double prime? Replace it. 2e to the x. 2e to the x plus 3 times what is y prime? 2e to the x, to the x equals 4 times y. What was the original y? 2e to, e to the x. Do some math and see if it maths. We have 2e to the x plus 3 times 2 is 6e to the x equals 4 times 2 is 8e to the x. Well, 2e to the x plus 6e to the x is 8e to the x. And so 8e to the x equals 8e to the x. And so does this work? Yes. Yeah. This one is true. Well, it did say, I guess, show that they are valid solutions. So it is a valid solution. It's true, however you want to say it. And actually, you know what? I think it'd be easier. I'm going to put my true underneath, and I'm going to work beside it. Let me find a different color. So now we're going to use y equals e to the negative 4x. So before we proceed, what is y prime? Negative 4e to the negative 4x. Are we okay with that? The derivative of e to some power is e to some power times the derivative of said power. So thus, negative 4e to the negative 4x. What is y double prime? 16e to the negative 4x. Okay. The negative 4 is still there. You guys are looking ahead and seeing we're going to do the derivative of negative 4x again. Negative 4 times negative 4 is 16e to the negative 4x. Okay, so we're going back to this y double prime plus 3y single prime equals 4y. Sub in what you know. So y double prime, 16e to the negative 4x plus 3 times y prime, so 3 times negative 4e to the negative 4x, equal to 4 times y, which is 4 times e to the negative 4x. Do some math. 16e to the negative 4x. 3 times negative 4 is going to make this minus 12e to the negative 4x equals 4e to the negative 4x. 16 minus 12, 4e to the negative 4x is going to be equal to 4e to the negative 4x. And it is also true. So the key is here, after you find your y, y prime, and y double prime, you are plugging them into that differential equation, right? You're plugging them in and seeing if it maps, okay? And it did say show that they are both valid solutions, so it was indicating that they should be valid solutions, okay? Not that there couldn't be a, you know, a twist, a twist exactly. You were expecting a twist? I was expecting a plot twist. Okay, well, no plot twist, but you never know. Okay, moving on. Case so three. Determine whether the function is a solution to the given general, given differential equation. Gosh, I can't talk. So, 
given that dy dx is equal to 5 tenths times 15 minus y. We want to know is y equals 3e to the negative 5 tenths x plus 15 a solution? I'm thinking no. I'm thinking yes because it's on the left side. <laughs> the I right one's going to be no. So you guys are just totally guessing, trying to expect what no, you like think No, like I genuinely think it's no. Do you put y in there and then you solve? Um. Oh, that would make more sense. I was just thinking it was wrong. Oh. Well, okay. So first of all, before we get started, can we find y prime for me, please? Based on if y is 3e to the negative 5 tenths x plus 15. Negative 3 has e to the negative yeah. 3 halves. Yeah. 1 and a half is 3 halves. Negative half times 3. Oh, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Four, five, five. So, I that. <laughs> okay. Let's see. How did I? Yeah. 3 times negative 0. 0.5 is negative 1.5. Mm -hmm. Negative 3 halves. So, derivative of 3e to some power is 3e to the power times the derivative of the power. So, 3 times negative 0. 0.5 negative 1.5 e to the negative 0.5 x through 15 is zero. zero. Okay. Save that for later. Okay. Save that for, nope, we don't need the double derivatives on this one. Save that for later because our given is that dy dx is that 0.5 times 15 minus y. Our job, what is, dy dx is another name for what? Y prime. Y prime, yes. Mm -hmm. So our job basically is to show that this equals this. So we're going to take the dy dx equation, which is 0. 0.5 times 15 minus, what is y? Three e to the negative five tenths x plus fifteen. Now, my recommendation before you distribute is to do some cleanup. Personal opinion, it's going to stay a lot neater here. So, I'm going to keep my point five out front for the moment. I wrote mine as 15 minus, I put parentheses. When you distribute that negative, it's going to be what? 15 minus, three, negative minus the 3e, and then what? Minus 15. That plus 15 becomes a minus 15. What do you know about the 15s? They cancel. They cancel. The 15s cancel. And if my 15s cancel, I have dy dx is the 5 tenths times negative 3e to the negative 5 tenths x. Well, it's not even really a distribute anymore, is it? It's just a multiply. What is 5 tenths times negative 3e to negative 5 tenths x? Negative 3 has negative 5 tenths x. Okay. So half of negative 3 is, I'm going to write it as negative 1.5. Not against your negative three halves. It's perfectly fine. It was said earlier too. I'm just trying to be consistent in how I write it. Oh, I wrote it as three halves up above. So. Okay. What just happened? That, that does not equal. We proved it. It equals. It does. It does equal. Oh. It's y prime, prime above. is equal to dy dx. So y prime and dy dx are the same. Meaning just different no. notations, right? I get it now. Okay. Um, and so on this one, what did I just write? Let's see. Is it a solution? The answer is? Yes. 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 <laughs> okay. B. Given that G prime of X is 5X plus 4Y over X, is G of X equal to 4X, X to the fourth minus 5X a solution? Do we integrate here? No. I would do the same thing I did last time in that find g prime of x so we know what we're trying to match it up to be, and then we'll plug in. 
to the other one. Okay. So if g of x is x to the fourth minus 5x, what's g prime of x? 4x cubed minus 5? Okay. Now, as we go back to the original, it was g prime of x is equal to 5x plus 4 times y. What's is y? That, is that g of x? Yeah. Right? g of x is another name for y? Yeah. So for y, I'm going to plug in x to the fourth minus 5x all over x. Do some cleanup. On top, 5x plus 4x to the fourth minus 20x. All over x? I don't think that works. Well, we did the subtract. Okay. I would clean up my numerator. Five, so I'm going to have 5x minus 20x, which is 15. negative 15x plus 4x to the fourth divided by x. Can we take that x with that denominator and divide? We can. You can take one denominator and divide it into multiple numerators. So then that becomes negative 15 plus 4x cubed. I started to flip mine and then I didn't. Right now it would be nice if it was flipped, huh? So then it's what? 4x cubed minus 15. No. No. Came really close, didn't it? But. See, I push the logic. We've got this right here and this right here. They are not the same, so no, it is not a solution. And this falls back into the category of if this one is, this one probably isn't, or vice versa. Oh my gosh, we're going to get another problem then. Don't oh, jinx me. You know how that well, there's works. There's like 13 minutes, so we probably get it. was like five, I would say. A function. Y equals f of t, which satisfies a differ differential equation, is called a solution. We will be able to find general solutions and particular solutions, okay, using different techniques. So, general solution is when you don't have extra information to plug in to find the pieces. For the differential equation, dy dx equals 3x squared, find a general solution. When we talk about a general solution, we're looking for y equals. Okay? So I currently have the differential equation dy dx is equal to 3x squared. How do we get to y? If you have dy dx and you want to get to y, we are going to integrate. Now, if we integrate dy dx, what's going to be the integral of dy dx? No, just the integral of just on the left side. Just y. How about just y? Like on action. Just y, because, keep in mind, go the other way now. The derivative of y is dy dx. Exactly. The derivative of y, one notation, is dy dx. Okay? I get the x. Integral of 3x squared. X cubed. X cubed. We don't have any other information. We don't have anything to plug in. This is a general solution, so... Plus c. Plus c. So general solution. That's it? That's all we had to do for that? That's all we had to do for that. Well, I, see how you were right. I did get another. Yeah. <laughs> I looked at it after I realized what the next problem was. I was like, okay, we're gonna get that one and still have time to move on. But yeah, why do we have so much space for such a little problem? Anyway, 
And I was like, I did it all in this one second. Well, because the next problem is the entire page, so. Thank you, dear. We could have spaced. Oh my gosh. We're going to be awkward to stop in the middle of this problem. If we had started, we probably could have had notes back then. Like at the very beginning. If we wouldn't have had Tesco? Possible. Yeah. Okay. You have been given a summer internship at a winery in the Tuscany region of Italy. Your task each day is to track the rate that red grape juice is being pumped into these large stainless steel vats. Okay. So, there is your fancy stem of the problem, okay? Now, this problem is all on one page because this is A through F and they all go together. We won't get through all these today necessarily. I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. But The depth Y is increased at a rate proportional to the square root of the depth at a given time. Write a rate equation that would represent this situation. So it's like y equals, or is it dy over dx equals? It'd be dy over dx. It's, it's direct proportional. Dy over dx, k times y? No, k times something has t squared. Oh, d, 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 dy over dt? Yeah. k times y? Babe, we need a square. Oh, there's a square. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm just letting you guys hash it out for a moment. Oh, yeah. Square root of k. This definitely would be dy over dt. Not y. Square root of the root depth given at a time. Or no, so you square root. dy dt equals k, square root of y. Yeah. Finally, here we go. Lock it in. <laughs> Did I just get the answer right? Dandy. Dandy. Stop it. Did I actually? Yes. Yeah. <gasps> Good job. Hooray. Now, let's make sure, do we all understand where all the pieces yes. came from, yes. okay? Honestly, so, everyone was yapping, so I don't <laughs> the depth of Y, I know. <laughs> Give me a headache, don't be yapping. Depth of Y increased at a rate proportional. When we're talking about a rate proportional, that goes back to the direct variation of Y equals KX, yes? yes? Okay. Now, the catch, and you guys caught it eventually, proportional to the... Square root of the depth at the given time. Okay, square root of the depth at the given time. What's depth? Y. And notice it does say at a given time. Write a rate equation that would represent this situation. At first, you guys start off dy dx was on the board for a while, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. But this is in relation to depth over the course of time, so thus dy dt. Huh? Well, as I said, I was going to try and teach, but then I was like, you know what? They're, they're making progress. You were headed in the right direction, so I let you go with it. Okay. When the grape juice reaches a height of four inches, the depth of the juice is increasing at a rate of four inches per hour. What, what can you find with this information? The rate of four per hour? Well, let's write down what we know. When the grape juice reaches a height of four inches, what is that? Your height, your depth. Give me a variable. Y. Yes? Yeah. Okay. So this right here, your Y is your four. Okay. The depth of juice is increasing at a rate of four inches per hour. What is that? Your what? Dy dt. Okay. It is the depth is increasing at a rate, four inches per hour. So that is the change in depth over time. So dy dt is four. And I guess I'm going to write four inches per hour. This four was four. Inches. So if you remember when we talked about this, basically we know that dy dt is 4 inches per hour when y is 4 inches. If we take that information and we put it into our previous equation, what can we find? 
we can find k. So if we use dy dt is k times square root of y, then we have 4 equals k times square root of 4? Yeah. K equals 2. So 4 divided by the square root of 4, 4 divided by 2, and k is 2. So what can you find? You can find k, and k is 2. Write the differential rate equation using your newfound information. Basically take part A and rewrite it based on part B. So instead of saying dy dt equals k times the square root of y, dy I can dt equals two square root of y. dy dt equals two square root of y. Because we know what k is now, yes? Okay. Complete the table below for the chosen depths using your differential equation. You notice that the rate of the depth of the grape juice is, cha is changing, does not depend on the amount of time. Eesh. So we're using the equation dy dt equals 2 times the square root of y. What is depth? Y. Depth is your y, isn't it? What is the rate the depth is changing? dy dt. That is your dy dt. Do some math. Square root of 0 is 0, right? Yep. Okay. Square root of 0 is 0 <laughs> times 2 is 0. zero. Thanks. Square root of 4 times 2. Four. Square root of 9 Six. times 2. Six. Square root of 16 times 2. Eight. Square root of 25 10. times 2. 14. Square root of 36 14. times 2. 14. And square root of 49 14. times 2. My brain was kind of doing those as I went. I should have realized, I should have just gone with the pattern, but my brain was doing the math each and every time, dang it. Okay. Good there we go. Okay. Um... The Vintner? Interesting. I don't know how to say that word, but the Vintner needs to know the depth of the grape, the depth of the water at any given time. That's why he hired you. What fact do you need in order to find an answer for your boss? The rate the depth is changing. Yeah. Reason why he hired you. Yeah. <laughs> well, you got it right there. Well. We have an equation for the rate the depth is changing. That's, that's not water. What? It, wouldn't it be wine instead of water? Uh, no, <laughs> it would be red grape juice. Maybe the engineer is like Jesus. I don't know. <laughs> Wait, what are you, I'm so confused on what you're asking. Because the depth of the water, the earlier the problem said the depth of the red grape juice. Uh, well, that's probably supposed to be the grape juice. That's probably supposed to be a grape juice, and that's a typo. Because we haven't talked about water any other place in this. Yeah. So. Maybe Jesus. Okay. What do we need to know in order to? The, he needs to know the depth of the water at any given time. If you, if he wants to know the depth of the water at that time. What do you have to know? The rate, the depth. It's dy dt. You need to know the time. That's what I'm saying. But if he comes and says right now, how much is there? Whenever you know it was started. Okay. So if we talk about when it was started, we're taught we need to know how much. Okay. How much depth? So that initial amount of. Grape juice is what I have. I say grape juice. Yeah, I have grape juice in here. So like. So, it says depth of water at any given time, but how about initial depth? Yeah. Like, in other words, how much what grape juice was initially in the vat. Okay. Okay. So, initial amount of grape juice in the vat is what I have written.
Okay. We awkwardly have to finish after tomorrow. And we just have more and more on page. Bring your uh, blue and green tomorrow with you. <laughs> or whatever colors you pick. Exactly. And we'll finish up. We'll um, look at the next page and talk a little about slope fields, and then you'll have some homework time. Man, if you guys come motivated, if we all come motivated, you can maybe get the homework done during class tomorrow. Well.